Yo, yeah, what's happening, everyone? Today is the uh, 25th of September of 2016. It is time to shave. Um, that's what I intend on doing here today. All right. Um, let's start off as per usual. Today's brush, uh, Detroit Mug, is going to be a Morrison Forndren Polo 3. The thing holds water, you guys. The soap that this is going to be digging into is Barrister and Man Seville. And it's going to be pretty good. It's been ages. I don't know why it goes so long between uses of this soap, but I do. And uh, I guess it just makes it that much nicer when I, <coughs> excuse me, when I get back to it. <coughs> excuse me. Just got back not too long ago. Spent the weekend in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It was wonderful. All right. Got a good load on this mug. And it is now time to uh, get this ladder going. A little disappointed in some of you guys. The video I posted the other day, um, you know, the music, the music video, um, it's very obvious, but a lot of people did not read the description of the video because there was not, I asked for no um, giveaway comments on that video. Lots of people, lots of people put uh, brush comments on that video. It was in the description. Also, I posted it in the comments as well. So, start reading, you guys. So, I think I may start trying to Titanic this soap. <coughs> um, if I do, it will be only the second tub of soap that I've ever finished. Um, the, uh, the only one that I have finished fittingly enough is uh is a um leviathan and uh until night music was released that was my favorite uh that was my favorite barrister and man soap so that makes all the sense in the world that that's the one that i would finish first <clears throat> but yeah so this one was recently uh excuse me this one was recently um, introduced in the uh, in the glissant base. So again, I think I'm uh, I think I'm gonna kill this one um, and uh, move to the uh, to the new one. I don't think I don't think that I have. Actually, I think I may have. No, I don't think I have a uh, Seville. <coughs> excuse me, um, a, a backup Seville. So I guess that'll make it a little easy. This is coming up just beautifully. And this brush is wonderful. 53 millimeter loft. <clears throat> I don't quite remember um, what the diameter of the knot is though. It's, uh, I'd say it's in the neighborhood of 30-ish. <clears throat> Plenty of backbone on this one. It is the finest. And it's quite good, as is this lather. Well, I think it's time. I think it's time to call that a lather. All right. Black Blackbird Blackland Razors, excuse me, makers of the Blackbird Razor, recently put up a uh, pre-order for the Open Comb Blackbird, which I missed. Not too happy about that, but. It is what it is. It happens. Let's just get on the next one. Today's razor, <coughs> excuse me, today's razor is a uh, Wolfman WR10C on a WRH2 handle. Today's blade is going to be one that I don't know if I've ever used ever, um, but it is a Ladas, Ladas Super Stainless. Here we go. Well, that's not bad at all. 
That's pretty good. So yeah, like I said, uh, spent the weekend in Nashville, got home, <clears throat> well, I should say I got here, because this is definitely not home. Um, I got here, got back here, uh, at about uh, 2.30 or so, maybe earlier. Had a great weekend, man. Um, there was a, uh, the name of the museum, <coughs> excuse me, the main museum, the uh, Museum of the Arts is called the Frist Center for the Arts. Um, the Frist does not have a permanent collection, so they're constantly rotating exhibits, and, uh, the exhibit that's currently there is an Italian car exhibit. And I've been sleeping on it all summer, I'll be very honest. Um, I think I just got cut a little bit by this blade. Hmm. Um, anyway, so I've been sleeping on the, uh, on the Italian car exhibit, um, you know, that's been there all, uh, all summer. So I finally made it before they roll out. Um, I think October 9th is when they're, uh, is when everybody's taking their cars and going home. A lot of them were, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot of them were, you know, owned by uh, private individuals. I think they said there was 50-something uh, cars in total. This blade is actually really good in this razor. And uh, I don't think that it, I don't think it did cut me. Wow. Nice one, Laras. I used a uh, silver blue in this razor the other day, and it just did not go well for me. And I also tried a, uh, a uh, Persona Lab Blue, and that was just, oh man, that was, that was terrible. <clears throat> um, so yeah, the, uh, the car exhibit went with a couple of friends. Um, everything, everything in the exhibit um, was Italian designed. Not everything was, you know from an Italian maker, but everything was Italian designed. Um, the exhibit started off with uh, some Alfa Romeos, three Alfa Romeos. The acronym, there were concept cars, and the acronym for what they called them was BAT. I don't quite remember what it stands for, um, but basically it's an exercise in aerodynamics. Um, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> the guy giving uh, like his little tour mentioned that uh, Alfa Romeo, some of their designers and engineers, um, you know, worked on the war effort, World War II, and uh, <clears throat> they, uh, I guess they got a quick lesson in aerodynamics and uh, why the co coefficient of drag is a number that you need to know a value I should say that you need to know and understand how it works so you can get it lower so yeah the uh, those three cars those three BATs those were like you know a study in uh, aerodynamics wild looking cars they were from the mid 50s um, very much look like something that George Jessen would drive in their vision of the future. You know, it's funny. I was watching a video earlier today when I got here, not too long after I got here, um, about the ugliest cars on this, you know, for sale right now in the United States. And they had mentioned the BMW i3, which I don't disagree with. But they had mentioned, uh, why is it that everybody's vision of the future is so ugly? And, uh, you know, in retrospect, a lot of times, you know, these visions of the future, man, they're, they're not the best looking things out there. So, anyway, so let's start off with those cars. <clears throat> and uh, some highlights. Um, they had a couple Ferraris. The, uh, the newest car in the exhibit was a 74, I think they said. And I don't quite remember what, uh, I don't, it was a Ferrari. Ameri Super Americana, I think it was, something like that. Um, yeah, so they, uh, now the highlight 
you know, while he was giving the tour, the uh, the guide was saying that um, you know all the cars there were uh, million plus dollar cars. Um, you know, he was saying that for uh, for insurance reasons, you know, he's not allowed to give like you know uh, reasonably accurate uh, figures of what the actual values are. But he did say that one car in particular stuck out like a sore thumb um, when compared to the others in terms of uh, value. And uh, the car in question was a Ferrari 250 GTO. Some of you may know what that is. I'd heard of it. Um, I'd heard of the car, but I didn't really know too much about it. So they had one. It was a blue one. And uh, he was talking about it, et cetera, et cetera. He encouraged everyone to look up the value of the car. The last sale that I was able to find went for $38 million. Crazy. This is a good blade. Up here tells me a lot. After I shave my head and do this pass on my mustache, it tells me a lot about the blade. This is a good one. Definitely like this blade more in this razor than uh, than a Bosch guard, even though it comes from the same factory. Oh yeah, man, that's what's up. They have some wild cars there. Um, one of them was a Lincoln Indianapolis. I think it was my favorite car there. I think it's the biggest car that I've ever seen in real life. And uh, it's probably the most orange car I've ever seen in real life. It was an, a stunning shade of orange. And uh, one of my friends that I went with completely ruined it for me by telling me that it looked like University of Tennessee Volunteers Orange. I hate this place. I hate this place and uh, for him to associate that car with the, I guess, the franchise thing here uh, it just bothered me. Thanks, Ryan. Jerk. Wow, this blade is really, really good. I'm glad I have these. I'd read somewhere that generally speaking, <clears throat> a lot of the blades that are made in this factory are not the sharpest ones out there. Um, this one definitely seems to have a good, a good amount of sharpness, man. <clears throat> Put some water in this lather. This brush handle is so easy to use. I know I use a lot of chubbies on this, uh, on these videos, but the reason for that is because of the knot size and the knot density. But in terms <clears throat> of handle and handle shapes, Polo, <coughs> excuse me, polos and polo derivatives are my favorite handle shape. So this brush is a joy to use. And this white label barrister, man, is the business. Or 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, there was also a, uh, a Chrysler there. That was not powered by an engine. It was powder powered by a turbine. A turbine. None of the cars 
had their hoods open, unfortunately. I think they mentioned that uh, they did have the cars with the uh, with the hoods open <clears throat> on like Wednesday or something like that for members of the museum patrons. AKA people who donate. So that would have been nice to see because they all had engines. He said they all worked, they all were drivable. There was one car, a uh, Lancia of some sort, I think it was, I think if I remember correctly, it had 8V in the name. And uh, every single thing on that car was original. The paint, the carpeting, the upholstery, the leather, every, every, everything was original. And um, he said that car had over 500,000 miles on it. That's crazy. Um, going back to that Ferrari 250 GTO, um, there were 39 of them that were made for a, uh, they were homologation, meaning that the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the car builder had to build and sell X amount of them to the public um, before they were authorized to participate in the race. Enzo Ferrari built 39 of these things and was like, hey man, um, you know, commissioner of this race series, I can't build anymore. And he was like, okay, well, in that case, you're not racing. So Enzo Ferrari then told him, okay, well, it looks like you won't have any Ferraris in your race for the next few years then. <laughs> and the commissioner of the race was like, yo, hold on, dude, hold on, man, let's work this out, let's talk this out. So he never built any more than 39. And, uh, They sell for lots of money. And I'm sure, you know, in addition to the uh, to the very limited availability, that story probably has a good bit to do with the uh, with why the value is what it is today. Each one of them has a, you know, very uh, documented and traceable history, which is always a good thing when selling anything that's an antique or, you know, sold in that style, or I guess valuable for that reason. You have a cut down here. <clears throat> That's from like a pimple or something that I had earlier this week. I've been cutting it all week long. Ladas Super Steel. I absolutely do recommend this blade. It's a good one. Let me wipe this off. Man, this stuff smells good. Residual slickness, like whoa. You see where this thing got on my shirt here, it kind of sucks. All right, today's aftershave. And I'm looking forward to this. Today's aftershave is Barrister and Man, Barrister's Reserve Coup. Uh, let me do this real quick. Word. All right. Been looking forward to this one. Um, I only recently have checked out. I only recently have checked out uh, Floyd Blue. Before it was discontinued, I never did try it. And I can see, after smelling this, 
why people were tripping so hard that it's gone. Because this stuff smells really good. <clears throat> Got myself here pretty decent. Oh man, that's nice. Just a wee tiny touch of alcohol and a wee tiny touch of menthol and a whole lot of good smells and skin conditioning things. That's going to be it for this video, everyone. Um, next week, I'll record a video on Sunday. That'll be the last time that you can enter in the, uh, in the brush giveaway. Um, until then, you guys stay safe. Uh, be easy and I'll speak to you soon. Peace.